Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is type in the names of some countries. So Canada, Brazil, Australia, and China. Then I'm going to select these countries and go to data and convert them into geography data types. And now I have these little maps next to each of the countries, which indicates that Excel has recognized them as countries. This means I can click on here and add in some information about the countries. There are many different options, but I'm going to select population. And now I have the population of these four countries. I'm going to select this and go to insert and I am going to insert a filled map. I'm going to make this map bigger. And now you can see I have my four countries in various shades of blue and the darkness of the blue indicates the size of the population. So China is a really dark blue because it has the largest population. When I have my chart selected, I can press Ctrl-1 to open up the formatting bar and then I can change the way this map looks. So if I go on here and select Series 1, then click here and open up Series Options, I can change the map projection. So there are three options, the Mercator projection, which stretches out the top and bottom of the map, the Miller projection, which is probably the one you're more used to seeing, and then also the Robinson projection, which makes the top and the bottom of the map look kind of curved. This is also the default option. If I go to series color, I can change the color of my data, so I can make the minimum and maximum values different colors, and I can also change it to be three colors instead of two if I want, so I can have the midpoint be a completely different color. However, I want this to be two colors, so I'm going to change that back. Now, if I go to the fill option and give it a solid fill, this changes the color of all of the other countries. I'm going to make these green, and I can also change the border if I want and change this to black and this changes the color of the country borders. If you want to get rid of the border, you just need to make it the same color as the country fill. I'm going to have mine be black and you can also increase the width of the borders to make the lines thicker and you can give it a dashed type if you want to make it a dotted line. I am going to change this back to a solid line and you can also add in a shadow to the countries and this gives it a kind of 3D looking effect. Now if I select the plot area on here and change the fill color here, it changes the background color. I'm going to make mine a light blue. However, we still have this white border around the edge. So if I go no fill and then select the chart area, this time if I change the fill to a solid fill, it's going to change the background color for the whole thing. Now at the moment, we have very specific values for the legend, but I can change these to more rounded numbers by typing in the numbers that I want over here. I'm going to have zero and also one and a half billion. Then if I select the map, I can click and drag down this blue box here over the top of these two values and then it changes the legend to these values here, so I have more rounded numbers. I also get this error message here, which is warning me that it's only been able to plot some of my data, and that's because it can't plot these two blank values here, but that is fine, so I'm just gonna delete that. And then also, if you want to change the series name here to something more sensible, right click and select data, and select series one and edit, and then change the series name. I'm gonna change mine to 
population and OK and OK again. And now you can see population has changed up here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is delete this and add in another country or another region, Antarctica. And you can see I have this question mark here, which means it's having trouble finding this location. So I'm going to click on the question mark and it opens up this data selector pane here and we can see it's found two places with the name Antarctica. I'm going to select this one. And now it's identified this as a country, I can add in its population. And then this region down here has changed color. Now if I triple click on Antarctica, I can select this location individually and all of the rest of the map gets whited out and now if I go to fill and change the fill color I can change it to whatever I want without affecting the rest of the map so I'm going to make this white and if I click off of here you can see that the rest of the map has stayed the same but this has now changed to white down here so you can use this to draw attention or identify one specific country this only works for countries that are in this list here. If I try and click on any other area of the map, it's not going to do anything because all of these countries are just part of the background, so you can't select them individually. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add in another column here. So I'm going to say that Canada is in the Northern Hemisphere, Brazil is in the Southern Hemisphere, Australia is in Southern Hemisphere, and China is Northern Hemisphere, and Antarctica is Southern Hemisphere, and Enter. Now if I select the map, I can right click and select Data, and select Population and Edit, and change the Series values. Instead of being these numbers here, I'm going to change them to these categories here and enter. Then I'm going to change color by numeric values to color by secondary category names and OK and A. And you can see that the legend has now changed to two individual colors and I have identified the northern hemisphere countries and the southern hemisphere countries with different colors. And Antarctica has stayed the same because I set it to be white. Now we still have this logo down here, which doesn't look particularly nice. So I found a couple of ways of hiding this. The first way is just to insert a box over the top of it. So I am going to draw a box here and remove the shape outline and then change the color of the box to match the background and then you can see that the logo is now hidden. If I click and delete this, the other option is to select the map and then copy as picture and OK. Then if I control V to paste this, I end up with another copy of my map. But this time it's in the picture format, so I can use the picture tools and crop it and I can delete the logo at the bottom. And now I have a map without the logo. I'm going to delete this. The next thing I'm going to do is to add in some more countries down here and make a completely separate map. So I'm going to have France, UK, Spain and Italy. Then I'm going to select these and convert them into geography data types. Then I'm going to add in their population and I'm going to select all of this and insert a filled map. And the first thing that you can see is that it is now plotting a different area. If I go to series one and open up the series options again, I can now select the map area. There are three different options for this. I can show only regions with data, which is just the four countries that I have selected, and it's not showing any of the countries around them. 
I can select multiple countries slash regions. And this is also the default option. And so it sort of tries to guess what area you want to be looking at. And I can also change it to show the whole world if I want, even though I just have data in one part of it. I'm going to change that back to automatic. And I can also add in some map labels. So if I go show all, you can see it is showing me the names of Spain, France and Italy. But when it comes to the United Kingdom, because that's such a long name, it can't fit the whole two words inside the country. So I get U dot 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 and K dot dot dot. I can try and get rid of this by showing best fit only. And then it shows me only countries whose names will fit inside the country and makes all of the other country names disappear. So now the United Kingdom doesn't have a label, but those are pretty much your only two options. The map labels don't have a lot of formatting options. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go online and search for list of countries plain text and I'm going to select this here plain text list of countries github then I'm going to highlight this list of countries here which is just an alphabetical list of all the countries in the world then I'm going to right click and copy then go back to excel and right click and paste special and I'm going to paste as text and OK. And now I have a list of all of the countries. I can now use Control, Shift and Down Arrow to select all of these and go to Data and convert them into Geography Data Types. And now they all have this little map here so they've been converted into geography data types and I can add in some information about them. This time I'm going to select carbon dioxide emissions. Then I am going to select all of these countries and I'm going to sort them by their carbon dioxide emissions. So sort by column B and I'm going to sort largest to smallest and OK. Now at the top here, I have a bunch of countries which it hasn't been able to find data for. Keep in mind that these are just numbers that have been taken off of the internet, so don't take them too seriously. I'm just going to delete the countries that don't have any data. Then I'm going to select all of the rest of the countries and press Control backspace to get back up to the top of the list and then insert a filled map. I'm then going to reposition this map and make it bigger. And now you can see we have a map plotting the carbon dioxide emissions of all of the countries in the world. We can see that China has the largest emissions by quite a long way. It's about double the size of the next biggest country, which is the United States, just here. And in fact, the emissions in China are so big that it's making all of the other countries look a very similar colour. We can fix this by going to series one and opening up the series color option and changing the maximum instead of being the highest value I'm going to change it to a number and at the moment it's just the highest number in this list so the China emissions but I'm going to change this to 1 million so 1 E6 and enter and now you can see it's changed the colors on the map this isn't scientifically valid because I'm now making all of the countries at the higher end of the range the same colour, but it makes it easier to look at differences in the countries at the lower end of the range. So I can now see that Brazil has the highest emissions of any country in South America, and I can also see South Africa has the highest emissions of any country in Africa. Now you can also see from this map that bigger countries have larger emissions, and this makes sense because they have a larger population. So the next thing I want to do is take the size of the population into account. So I'm going to 
do equals and then select this and now I, I get the same list of options that I had before and I'm going to select population and enter. Then I'm going to double click to fill in the rest of this table. Then I'm going to do equals the carbon dioxide emissions divided by the size of the population and enter. And now I have here carbon dioxide emissions per person. And I'm going to double click to fill in the rest of that table. And now I can select my map again and I can select the blue rectangle and click and drag it into this new column. And now it's changed the colours of the countries. I'm just going to sort this table again. Control shift down arrow and then sort and custom sort. And this time I'm sorting by column B and OK. And now you can see China no longer has the highest emissions. It is actually, if I scroll down, down here now, because even though it has very large emissions, it also has a very large population. Now at the top of the list are actually quite small countries. For example, the highest one in the list is Qatar, and that is this really small country here in the Middle East. Now again, I would like to reiterate that these are just numbers that have come off of the internet, so you shouldn't take them too seriously. This is just an example of something that you can do. So in this video, I have shown you how to use geography data types and field maps in Excel, and that is everything.